Hey guys, it's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe. So last night, uh, I just finished Bloodstained Ritual of the Night on the Xbox One. Um, I played it on the Game Pass. I was going to buy the game, but I got the Game Pass for, I think they matched how much Xbox Live time you had. So it's over, I think it's like next April or May uh, for $2. So I did that and I got the Game Pass and I've been messing around with little games here and there. And I noticed Bloodstained was on there and I wanted to play it. So I figured if I could beat it for free pretty much, why would I go out and buy buy it again if I'm not going to play it again? So I played through it, and um, it was good. I think uh, if you are a fan of any of the old Castlevania games, especially Symphony of the Night, you'll really like this one. The game is about this, um, I guess she's like a, I don't know if she's a vampire hunter, whatever. The story was a little silly. I didn't love the story. Uh, Miriam. And uh, that's who you play as. You can, you know, upgrade your levels and customize her um, with different outfits that do different things, different weapons that have different abilities and different strengths and weaknesses. Um, there's tons of things called shards, which is like magic that each of the monsters have. And once you kill them enough or if you kill certain bosses, you get these shards and you can equip those. And they do different things like increase certain abilities or let you use special things like warping or um, shooting fire. There's all there's tons of them. There's way too many to get into, but you get the idea. Um, so it's a side scroller like the old ca old Castlevania games, and you go around and hit things, and upgrade your character and gain levels, as I said, and uh, go through different areas. And most of the time, there's backtracking. So you'll do an area, and then you'll realize you get some ability, and you can come back later and maybe reach a different place or get to a different area. There's lots of little secret nooks and crannies that you can like break open walls or floors and go to special areas. There are secret bosses. Uh, it's it's a lot of game and it's really fun. I um, I played on normal. Uh, the last boss was a little hard for me, so I ended up leveling up a little bit, beating some optional bosses, and um, then getting it a run again using specific items and weapons and stuff. And it was a little easier. And then uh, I beat the game. I thought the story was okay. It was this thing about uh, this book being stolen and like these evil vampires and, and or whatever and demons and you have to stop them. It wasn't like that great of a story, but it was all right. Uh, the voice acting was decent. The graphics are cool. It looks um, sort of like Symphony of the Night, um, but more of a 3D rendered look. Not as like, it's not really like that cell shaded look, but it has a distinct style. Um, I thought the graphics were decent. I didn't love them, but I thought they were cool, you know, and they did what they had to. Uh, the monsters are pretty varied. When you get on into the game later, sometimes they just change color or ability, uh, but there are some pretty varied monsters and bosses to fight. As I said, there are secret bosses you can fight. Admittedly, I've never beaten a Castlevania game before this one, if you would consider it a Castlevania game. I played through a part of Symphony of the Night on PS1, and I played some of the... Super, uh, excuse me, Nintendo versions, the original Nintendo, when I was a child, they were so hard for me that I couldn't really get very far in them, so I never got into them. Uh, I do appreciate the sort of horror, you know, gothic elements to them, even though they're not scary. Um, the game plays like a, an action platformer, in case you haven't played any of the other Castlevanias. Uh, it was probably about a 12 to 14 hour game in total with unlocking pretty much everything minus some achievements I missed. Um, there's all kinds of achievements for getting like all the magic shards, um, seeing everything on the map, um, you know, buying a number of things or selling a number of things or dismantling a number of things. So there's a lot of achievements and little things you can get to hunt down if you want to lengthen your replayability with the game. Um, I think overall the game was really fun. It, it's a little samey, because, you know, the whole game, you're pretty much going from area to area to area, you know, and conquering the area, going to the next one, and then eventually going back, like I said, to find maybe um, hidden areas or things you missed, or now you have an ability that makes you jump higher, so you can jump to some ledge that you missed, and you find a new area. So there's a lot of adventuring and exploring, and I appreciated that. I thought it was fun. Um, I had a little bit of a lull around the middle game, and then I was like, sort of like, oh, I don't even want to keep going with this. And then I pushed through, and I had a good time again. Um, overall, I thought it was a great game. Uh, I think that if, again, if you're a Castlevania fan or even just a platforming fan, maybe Shantae, 
Shovel Knight. Um, Shovel Knight's my favorite, by the way. Things like that. I think you'll probably enjoy this one. Um, it's got, you know, like I said, the story's not so great, but the game has its own little flair to it. Um, and lots of lots and lots of things you can unlock and do. You can cook. There's recipes and things you can cook. And you can eat to um, gain more health. Um, you can... There's a quest side, little side quest you can do back at home base, uh, whether it be cooking for someone or you know avenging people's deaths and killing certain monsters. So uh, it's pretty good. I, I think this was a, um, if I recall, a kickstarted game, and I think they did better than they expected to do. But it was made by the uh, originators or one of them who made the original Castlevania, but they can't call it Castlevania because those rights are still owned by, I want to say Konami. Um, but Konami's been a little out of sorts lately with which games they've been releasing. So there's some nods to Castlevania, um, some inversion type jokes. Um, there's characters that look and sound and act like other characters from the Castlevania series. So I'm told, but they have different names. So uh, it's definitely a cool game. I think if you were to go out and buy the disc for like $30, you'll get your money's worth. Uh, if you have the game pass, I think you should definitely give it a try. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's a fun game. I can see people going back and doing New Game Plus or, you know, playing it on a harder mode. It's definitely got some replayability if you've missed things or you want to go back and unlock stuff. And uh, I enjoyed it. I think it was, it was fun overall, and uh, I'm glad I got a chance to play it for the, the $2 that I paid on the Game Pass. So uh, check out, I almost said Castlevania, check out Bloodstained Ritual of the Night if you haven't. I think you'll enjoy it. It was a good platformer. Thanks, guys, for watching. It's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe. Be good.